So the release date of Tenet has been pushed back by two weeks. So that's given me a little more time to do my Nolan reviews. If you aren't aware, just like a lot of film YouTubers, I'm reviewing all Nolan's movies up until Tenet and then after that I'm going to give a ranking on it. So I've already done my review on Following, which was his first movie, which had literally no budget. And next up, one of his most famous movies I'm going to review is Memento. So Memento is about a man tracking down his wife's killer and this man is called Leonard who suffers from short term memory loss so he can't really remember things 15 minutes ago. His span of memories can last up to 15 minutes then it will just fade as he says a lot. His memory has been like this ever since he was in the accident which was involved with his wife's murder where he hit his head quite hard. So since he forgets everything nearly instantly. He tattoos things on his body, he takes Polaroid pictures and writes something at the bottom just so he can get a little bit closer to solving the mystery and isn't always starting at square one. So yeah, that sounds like the usual hunting down a loved one's killer with a little twist on it, but that's not the only interesting thing and I'll get into that when I jump into the prose. So this movie was shot in a very interesting and unique way. It was basically shot at the end and then without any context really and then as the movie goes through it kind of goes back in reverse explaining the things that happen. And it has two different filters. It has the normal colour which is where things are playing out in reverse and then it has a black and white where it has Leonard on the phone kind of narrating what has gone through the whole story. So it was very unique especially at the time but nowadays some more films have kind of adapted it in certain ways. One that kind of comes to mind straight away is Sonic. It's not really the same but it's similar where it starts off at the end and then the narrating goes oh wanna know how I got here or whatever and then it cuts to the beginning of the story and then ends up getting there. But yeah to have this executed so well was very rare at that time and especially for literally only your second movie as a director. So as I mentioned Nolan directed the film Following which cost around $6,000. He then directed this one which had a $9 million budget so a big jump there but still not a huge budget. It's a film like this which was ex executed so well which made him such a big name director and got him all these big budget movies like Inception, the Batman trilogy. And what Nolan described a lot about this movie in an interview is reverse cliffhangers which makes a lot of sense. So something would play out and you wouldn't know what would happen or like where it began so you didn't have any context and then as the film goes on it bit by bit goes back a little bit to see what had happened right before. It, you have to wait patiently a bit to see as it, do, it doesn't really make sense until this is shown. Now I'm a big fan of the characters that were in this movie. They didn't have too many. The only real characters that were in it for more than one scene was only like about five people and you can't really trust any of them. As I mentioned Leonard's memory is pretty much wiped every 15 minutes and you're pretty much living the movie through his perspective so you have no idea what these characters have done before and we're just meant to trust them. So you literally don't know what is true and what's not as it's also spoken from his perspective and what is also said by a lot of people in their reviews and also Nolan himself is Leonard is quite an unreliable narrator because his memory's wiped every 15 minutes or so, he's just going off memory and you can't really trust your memory all the time. If someone asked you five minutes ago, did you see a, a red car? And for example, you didn't, but because you're not too concentrated on that, your mind might change the color you actually saw to red. So that's why he's a bit unreliable as well as not remembering things entirely. I think Guy Pearce's performance in this movie is very underrated. I haven't heard it talked about enough and as I watched through it, this role just seemed too easy for him. It was like a, a walk in the park. He portrayed that very confused look of someone but also that he had experienced it loads before. And when he's always telling someone like, ah, oh, this condition, you can kind of sense his frustration 
when he finds out that he's already told them a billion times before. The attention to detail in this movie is very good. Now, I've only watched through it once, but there's so many little things which if you kind of watch it a second time knowing how it all plays out, they all make sense and fit into each other. Yeah, so as I said, I've only watched it once, which was last night, but I can see where that goes because as I was watching through it, I was like, oh, what's the importance of this? And then it pays off later, but then if I saw it later, it would all make sense. Now, one final thing is some advice for when watching this. You should watch this with your full attention and please don't go on your phone during it. Also, when I say with full attention, I also want need you to like be awake because I watched this late at night. I was very tired. I, I, I watched it in two halves actually. So I watched the first half very late the other night. I fell asleep and had to rewind back to when I last remembered and finished it this morning. I still understood it all and very much enjoyed it, but I think watching it all one go, not be distracted, give your full attention to it, and this will be a great watch. Before I get into this final verdict, I, between takes, I've had some breaking news that Ian Holm has sadly passed away. So he was famous for playing Bilbo Baggins in The Lord of the Rings, not, he, he was at the beginning of The Hobbit, but that movie was mostly Martin Freeman. So yeah, just like to pay my respects to him and may he rest in peace. So now on to my final verdict. Once again, I feel like I'm doing this a lot, but I don't have any cons. There's, it's just such a great movie. Even if you look at other people's reviews, they don't have any cons. Maybe about it not being as magical on the rewatch, but I can't really give that because I haven't rewatched it for a second time. And I don't really think that's its fault. It's just, you've seen it now, so it's not gonna be as good the first time. And this movie was actually written by Christopher Nolan's brother, Jonathan Nolan. Well, there was a mini story which Christopher Nolan adapted into a movie with his permission. And it's just mad to think what two brothers can do. But yeah, overall, great performance from all the actors. This movie has this constant mysterious feel of like, who can you trust? And just a very well executed and fun concept. And yeah, as I said, the best time will be the first time because it's got all the twists. I couldn't actually go into too many details because it's all plot twists and everything in this movie. So just go watch it for yourself and don't look at any spoiler reviews if you haven't seen it already. But yeah, for me, Memento gets an eight out of 10. And once again, definitely worth watching. And as I said, pay attention, don't be tired and don't go on your phone. So there is my review done for Memento. As I said, this is the second one in a series of Nolan films leading up to Tenet, and then I'll do a ranking on it. A lot of movie fans and reviewers are doing that as well. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, I'd really appreciate if you would like the video and subscribe. Let me know in the comments what you thought of Memento, and if you're excited for Tenet. I'll make sure to reply to all of them, and maybe we can start a fun conversation about this movie. But yeah, once again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.